Well, good morning, and uh, welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Friday in the octave of Easter. Uh, it is Friday, April 9th, and it is the feast day of St. Casilda of Toledo, which is located in Spain. And evidently, she was a, a, a convert to Christianity from being raised Muslim. And she had a, a miraculous healing uh, from the healing waters of, I forget where. Um, but through that experience, she ended up becoming baptized. And then she became a Christian. So that is St. Casilda of Toledo. And she is believed to be uh, 100 years old whenever she died. Anyway, to today's gospel. It is from John chapter 21. Verses 1 through 14. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas Codidimus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and the two others of his and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything yet? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net without the fish, or with the fish. When they climbed out on the shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the, di and none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. Okay, so we've got the appearance to the seven disciples here. And uh, you can see the parallels. Um, if you go back to whenever Jesus first called Peter, Simon Peter, and the first apostles, um, whenever he began his ministry. So there's parallels there uh, where Jesus just keeps tapping in. Uh, he keeps tapping into their memories um, to uh, to show who he is to them. Um, and just notice that, uh, you know, Simon Peter says, I'm going to go fishing. And then they all say to him that they want to come with him. So Peter is the leader um, in this gospel and of the church. Uh, but you can see that Peter is the leader because they still stood by Peter's side. You know, why would the disciples stay with Peter if Peter wasn't the leader of the church appointed by Jesus Christ himself? Why wouldn't they all just disperse right away after Jesus had died on the cross? So that, that really stood out to me. Um, and then as they were fishing, Jesus said to them, who they don't realize that it's Jesus yet, uh, they said, Jesus said to them, children, have you anything to eat? So I just think of this as, you know, you know, at my age, and, you know, if somebody called me a child, you know, children, have you caught anything yet? You know, that seems kind of odd, right? And that would be, it would be very easy for us to take offense to that. To say, like, what do you, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a grown man, why are you calling me a child? But that's just Jesus inviting us to always have this obedience to him and to have this childlike faith and trust in Jesus. Um, and they react, you know, very maturely. Because their reaction could have been much different, um, much how a lot of us 
particularly men who would react if somebody called you a child as, as an adult. Even whenever I was teaching high school kids and I would call them kids or quit acting like a child, they would take offense to it. So uh, we know how easy it is for you know those in their 30s to or 40s or 50s or 60s to take offense to it. So you can see the obedience and respect that they have for this man who they don't know is Jesus yet. Um, so as we go on through this gospel, you know, so Peter or Jesus tells them to, you know, where to cast the net out. And um, then they finally recognize through that experience and through that tapping in of memories of like going back to whenever Jesus first called them and recognizing Jesus. And through the hearing of his voice, it says, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment for he was lightly clad, and he jumped into the sea. So Peter has this, this true devotion and this true commitment and true obedience to our Lord that he can't wait. He needs to go see the Lord, that he tucks in his garment, he jumps into the sea, and he swims to Jesus because he wants to be with Jesus that bad. And I'm sure part of his guilty conscience um, still feels bad for denying Christ uh, whenever during his passion. So you can see this, uh, and I forget where it was in the New Testament yesterday. In yesterday's New Testament reading, of which Peter, um, Jesus asked Peter if he believed in him three straight times to make up for the three times that he denied him previously. So that's uh, important. Um, so then you know, as there's a there's a footnote here um, that of the symbolic meaning meaning behind the number 153, um, but I'm not going to talk about that because I can tell I'm already getting a little long winded. Um, but you can just see that, you know, as we go through here, Jesus eats with them again. Um, and this is the third time that Jesus is being raised from the dead. Or the third time, not that, not that part, sorry. It's the third time since Jesus was raised from the dead that he revealed himself to his disciples. So he, he, because he, he knows the human weakness and he knows that we need to confirm different things. Um, and that if we just see it once, we still get skeptical. So Jesus is persistent, and he wants to provide that clarity and surety of making sure that, that the disciples indeed know, believe, and trust that Jesus is who he says he was and who he still is. And that has to be the case. Because um, he wanted to get the church started on the right foot. And, you know, if, he, if, if Jesus wasn't persistent and didn't do this to the disciples, the church would never have developed into what it is today as the Catholic Church, nor would it have been able to sustain itself throughout the course of history into the present day. So, so the challenge for us out of all this is, is to recognize whenever Jesus is tapping into our memories and revealing to us that he is with us in every single moment of our lives. Um, so we, we need to become more aware of God's presence, myself included, in our everyday and seemingly mundane tasks throughout the day. And um, so that's a challenge today and, and every day. So have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.